Now you say, you know, you're into the therapy thing. If you look at it from my standpoint of view, I was scarred, devastatedly, blow to the chest, boys to men. And I come in pretty much humbled, if you will, and just grateful for everything that's starting to take place. Um, so I didn't, I, I didn't have this uh, uh, arrogance. I had a confidence that, you know, I had since the beginning of time, mm -hmm. but I was trying to connect with these guys who already had a connection with each other. And, you know, they just was not, they weren't having it. And that's, that's really sad. But have you ever was this during the recording process or or even after the album was out? When when did you feel the tension? Was it when you were recording the songs or after the album was out? I began to feel the tension um the very first day we were rehearsing. I'll never forget this. We were rehearsing uh, National Anthem. And my cell phone rings in the middle of the rehearsal. And it's Babyface. Now you gotta understand the first thing I'm thinking is Babyface is calling my phone. <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> That's the first thing I'm thinking, right? And you know, I'm like, hello? And he's like, hey man, can you come to the studio? You're gonna say no to Babyface. Like, <laughs> you know, he's the president of your label and he's and he's and he's babyface, right? So I had to leave the rehearsal. I'll never forget that very first day. I could feel the tension mm -hmm. that was again impressed upon me because I'm just doing what I'm told to do as old, you know. And after that first call, there were many calls, and you know, face he didn't he didn't care, you know. <laughs> like, I got work to do, and I need you in the studio, and that's when it began. Yeah, I knew it then. Mm -hmm. Now, some of us from the outside would think, who. You know, because we've seen a new edition story and and whole Bobby stuff, but this is not this is something different. It, is management not supposed to? Hey, what's up, guys? You know, this is just happening. Or or, or or there's a group power. Let's talk this out. We've got a massive opportunity. I mean, uh, um, or does it just fester? I mean, how for, for people from us from the outside looking in, we just wonder: aren't there any rules, any conversations, any sort of team meetings, and making sure everyone's <laughs> Yeah, yeah. so let me answer your question this way. On a general note, that is exactly what it should be. You should have management that manages. And it's called personal management for a reason, you know. Um, and if you look at any group today that has stood the test of time, they had that foundation in the mm -hmm. beginning, you know. Destiny's Child is a prime example of, oh, my God, look at this up and down they went through, how many changes they hit, but they they stood. No addition. I mean, come on, it's the same yeah. thing. You know? Brooke, Brooke Prince, and, yeah. And so, yeah, yeah, so you had a foundation. You had someone looking at boys to men. Oh, my God, you know? All of these groups, and I know I know boys to men's story personally, even, even in more depth after being with them for eight years, you know, it wasn't always peaches and cream. And, you know, there's breakups and there's like not doing anything and everyone goes through the hell. But you also have groups like As Yet who, you know, I feel like we got it uh, really easy in the sense that when we signed with the Face Records, Jackie McCorn, mm -hmm. Tracy Edmonds' mother, was our mm -hmm. manager. Yeah. And here... If you wanted to get something done, Jackie, all she had to do was talk to Babyface <laughs> at the dinner table. Hey, listen, make sure you make sure you write another song for my guys. <laughs> pass, pass the thought. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. So, you know, we had it like that. Um, but uh, but you have a lot of groups that can tell you their stories, as it is one of them, that took for granted the most amazing opportunity to do it extremely big. Mm -hmm. And um, and then you had the incestuousness because, you know, having the mother-in-law of Babyface as your manager is a good and bad thing. And then you have me who had had four years experience prior. Mm -hmm. I did what I could 
to try and get the guys to see, look, guys, I mean, let me tell you where I just came from. You don't want to be there. We're mm -hmm. here. Let's make this. Let's be. Come on. Let's be brothers, man. You don't have to even like me. Just let's do our jobs. Let's do it well. Let's get on the stage and go home. You know, no, they weren't. They weren't hearing that at all. Not at all. You know, and uh, it is what it is. <laughs> I, I think one of the big disadvantages that you guys had was also this was um, the face civil war. L.A. and Babyface sort of, you know, you know, face starting Yab Yab Yum, and um, and do it, and moving to L.A. while L.A. is running its stuff out in in um, in Atlanta, and so in a way, as yet, didn't feel part of the you know from the outside, we didn't think you guys were part of the face because you weren't really in the Atlantis sort of we didn't see the videos with TLC or Usher or Donnell yeah. Jones. We didn't we felt like it just felt like an anomaly. And I, and I don't know if he didn't have LA behind you guys the same way he has been behind everyone else. If that also adds to the the to the to the the confute the, the stuff. So I'm gonna give you a complete big fat absolutely not. Um that was not our story. Um, I know other artists' stories that are what you just said, mm. but L.A. Reid was very much behind. Okay, as did absolutely. You know, because um, you know, truth be told, you know, Babyface owning the label with L.A. Reid, you know, wasn't really an executive style type of a gentleman. He's a songwriter, singer. All right, he loved the songs. He loved writing the songs. I'm not saying he didn't do business. He did. Mm -hmm. But he didn't do L.A. Reid business, right? Mm -hmm. And um, and when I say that, the L.A. face, L.A. Reid, excuse me, the L.A. and face one-two punch is that you make the eggs, I make the, the grits, mm -hmm. you know? And so as yet had major support from L.A. Reid. Okay. No questions asked, right? And, um, and... But the other guys may tell you different. I, on the other hand, I'm right there too, but I'm coming from a different angle than mm. what they are because I told you, not only was I in the group, I was with Babyface all and LA the time. And Pebbles, like, yeah. All the time. You see what I'm saying? I saw everything, you know? So there is no excuse whatsoever that as yet could not have gone to Venus, you know, um, um, successfully, you know, it was more of an internal dysfunctional problem within the group uh, that had to learn the hard way. And the hard way was failure at the end of the day. Hey, thanks for watching. Really appreciate it. If you love what you watched, there's over 100 artists that we've interviewed, so please check out the videos. Remember to like, share, and not unsubscribe. But better still, become a member of Halftime Chat and get exclusive videos ahead of time. But thanks for watching. Take care. <laughs>